Fiori. So Fiori is the one of the yeah, new user interface. New user interface. So SAP uh, introduced this Fiori concept in 2013, I guess. Yes. Fiori uh, in 2013. So SAP introduced this Fiori concept into the market. So apps based concept. So whatever we are doing here, they come with the new user interface shell. So we can log into that new user interface. So all the apps are available. All the apps are available. So we can do the all the Fiori configurations and everything from there. So that is called Fiori. Fiori related things, everything. We can see it from there. So at the same time, Fiori, so the SAP given the the multiple deployment options to the customers like one is the so central hub one is the central hub and the second one is the embedded so embedded with embedded with uh, any one of the system here so embedded embedded option so central hub means you don't need uh, separately we have to install the fiori system separately you have to install the fiori system so with fiori will work on on top of the sap netweaver components plus so some UI, SAP, UI, BAS, so some components you have to install it. Means Fiori uh, front-end server or Fiori uh, front-end server components you have to install it here. So then, so if you are the ECC, it's a, it is a central hub. It means if you are the ECC, BW, portals, you have the many more systems are there. So what are the options you have in your organization? Maybe sometimes they may ask you the question. Maybe you can say, maybe if you are the if you if you have the S4 ana system, you can say yes, embedded with the S4 ana. So if it is not the S4, that's you can say like so it's a central hub. We have the one Fiori system. So this Fiori system will connect to the oh, via trusted RFC connections. It will connect to the your ECC systems, your ECC. So then BW systems, then. So some other like uh, portal or whatever it may be, it will connect to the systems here, right? So it will connect to the this systems here like this. It will connect it here. So here, Fiori, here configuration side, here in the ECC SMT1, in the trusted systems, we have to add it. Here also trusted systems, we have to add it. Then RFC destination, here also trusted systems, trusted systems, trusted systems, trusted systems. Then once you add it, all the trusted systems here, the theory then <clears throat> we need to enable the applications we need to enable the apps depends upon the requirement what are the apps they required in the console so we will we will we will enable the all the applications ecc related transactional apps so apps means they are the types of apps are available here in the sap so they are the so transactional apps transactional apps here so okay so transactional apps transactional apps here then fact sheets then so web webin pro apps webin pro apps then sap webin pro apps so then gua apps we have the gui apps also we have here sap gua apps gua apps so <clears throat> means our transaction codes related apps also so we can so deploy it here like that we have the there are the multiple apps are available here. There are the multiple apps are available here. So and also BW related analytical apps, analytical apps and uh, fact sheets. That's we already there. Transactional apps. So this type of packs here. Transactional apps means which are related to the ECC like timesheet approvals. So purchase order approvals. So leave request approvals. Those are the transactions, transactional related approvals here. So analytical means BW related, BW related applications and everything here, BW on our performance. So analytical, analytical related applications here. The fact sheets also will come under the ECC only here. So like that, so we can enable the apps, we can enable the apps. So based upon the, they will provide the apps. So we have the one central HANA library. So where we have the thousands of like not the yeah thousands of applications are available here. The safety standard applications here. 
that is called the SAP standard site, Fury apps library. Here we have the so n number of n number of maybe if we go home page, see here as of now, 16,000 apps are available here. 16,000 apps are available in the SAP systems here. Either the apps are related to the S4 and S4 and cloud, BTP, business root systems like ECC, business root systems means ECC, CRM, BW, all will come under list and lightweight hubs. So here you can see 16,000 apps are available here. So depends upon the, so whatever the business you have, whatever the applications they want to enable it, then we need to go to the here. So we need to go to the here. We need to enable the app. Suppose the example, uh, Fiori apps for the S4 and our systems. Maybe it depends upon the backend product. You need to filter it out here. It's a S4 and our system. So then they want to enable the account assignment, payrolls, payable. So over you. So like, or suppose like they want to enable this one, right? So then select this one and see what is the version of the your S4 and our system. So how to enable it, this apps here, first of all, right? So we have the Fiori related, uh, the transaction codes is the main here. So here to enable, to configure the Fiori configurations, first of all, RFC destinations to the, your subordinate systems are very important here. So then <clears throat> once the RFC destination is completed, <clears throat> then next one is the, so what we have to do, alias creation, alias creation in SPRO, we have to do it. So then alias creation, that alias we have to point to the RFC destination here. So then, then we have to enable the, we have to enable the apps, apps based on business requirement, based upon the business requirement, we have to enable the list of applications here, list of applications, we have to enable it here. So, so here, first of all, alias creation. Then where we have to enable it means slash and slash I double F and D slash the main underscore service is the transaction code. There we will enable the list of applications. Here you need to enable the O data. O data services we have to enable it. O data. O data is the it is the binding. It's a kind of pipe, two-way connectivity spike here. So which means whenever you open the O data service. So it will connect to the your backend system here, O data. So how can I know which O data services we have to open it here? When you go to the SAP standard apps library here, suppose you want to enable this app. So this app related implementation information you have here, implementation information configuration you have. If you want to enable and enable this app, you need to and activate the this SICF service in the SICF service in the so service, the service we have to enable in the your so system your system and this should be active, right? And also you need to enable the these are the O data services should be active status. These are the O data services we have to activate it here, right? So see here they have given the list of O data services which should be active here, right? We need to go to the main underscore service. Let me show you in our uh, systems here. Here, let me go to the ECC. I have embedded with the ECC here. So in my in our training systems, so, so I have embedded with the ECC systems here. So if you go to the here in the transaction code, so here uh, there is an option. Right here, slash and slash I double F and D underscore the main underscore, the main underscore service here, the main underscore service here. Here, we have to activate and maintenance the all the O data services here. All the O data services, we have to activate it here. 
So here in this list, so you will get the list of O data services here. O data, O data, each O data system is pointing to the, see here, each service, it is pointing to the one of the ICF node and system alias. System alias means in the earlier screen, we created the system alias, that is the system alias. So which means that system alias is pointing to the specific RFC destination via this connection is pointing. So this app, if you open it here, then via the alias, via the RFC destination, it will go to the ECC and it will pull the data, it will give the results to the users here. Means single Fiori URL, then users can access the all the applications, they can access it here, all the applications they can access. So applications and all, so this standard applications, we can activate it. We can all activate it here, it's a admin, we can activate it. If any customization required, if any customization required, normally the application, the application screen will looks like here they will give you the application, how the application will be, the future send all they will give you, the how the applications, the how the data will populate in the payment side incoming. So they will give you the, the screen here. So you, you don't like this screen, right? You need some customization, right? You want to give them some customization here. In that case, if you need some customization here, so then you need to do the, you need to involve the, the developers, the developer development persons, you need to involve it here so that they will perform the customization. They will perform the customization in the system here. That's what we have to do in the system here. Customization have to perform here. So, so that time we need to involve the development. So most of the, all the configuration activities we can deploy it here. Most of the configuration activities, these all are the admin transaction ports here. So we can create it here. So then, so here we can activate it. You can just to refresh the metadata while activating the service, it will, the metadata will be refreshed from the source metadata. So refreshed from the source. Source means here in the, your ECC will come under the source here. So then uh, you can just do each app. Here you will get the, all the details here. If you go to the implementation information configuration, list of old data services, list of services here. Then you have the catalogs, groups, mappings, and the roles. Roles also available here, business roles. What are the roles we have to assign to the users to get this type of app? Who required this app? Business roles here, account payable officer, then construction specialist, they required this, this officer. So we need this role should be available in the PFCG. So then it's standard role. Definitely if the S4 in a system, the standard roles are always available. Then we can uh, uh, we can assign to the one user. The user will display the, the app like looks, user, user will get the app. He can open the app like this here. He can open the app, right? So like this user can open the applications like this here. Right, so this way we can, uh, this way we can see the uh, customizations apps or standard apps we can configure it here. So if any errors, maybe sometimes they may ask you where can you check here if any errors. So theory related any errors we can track it under here error underscore log IWFND gateway log file here gateway error log file here in the gateway error log file here we can see the each and every error and we can fix the all type of errors we can fix from the gateway side. In the gateway, we can fix the all type of errors we can fix it from here in the gateway. So transaction code. And most of the troubleshooting area we can come from, most of the troubleshooting step means how will you fix it out? App is not opening, cannot open the app, some authorization error, everything. So the transaction code is the slash n slash i double f and d slash the error underscore log is the transaction code here or smicm so then smicm the icm log file open it here a maximum 100 percent of all the logs we can see it from here in case of some tracing is required why because it's a http https calls all the apps right so then you will get the you will get the things from here you will get the so logs, more logs from here, right? Either embedded, so our central hub. Embedded means, so you, you no need to install the separately. So you will you will, uh, you will you will not get the, any hardware cost, then just embedded with the your ECC system. So, but it will be overloaded. Why? Because both are in the 
same system both will use the common resources and the common memory common storage common database that that will create a problem here so it will be overload you don't have that much of load that what we can do we can embed it with the yes ecc or s4 otherwise you can go for the central hub here so if you are the central hub you need to do the some lots configuration you have to perform it is the embedded so same system same ecc system you know, though, so though, no, you don't need to do much configuration. If there is no delay also, immediately data will be displayed here. So that's why the Fiori, we can use the deployment option here. From our side, as a base consultant administrator side, they may ask you the, so which one you propose, what is the difference between the central hub and embedded? And did you enable the apps? Yes, what are the transaction codes? Then any troubleshooting you have done it? Yes, what is the error log files? And also, so what is the difference between the central hub and embedded? What are the high level configuration activities you have to perform? So, oh, so this may be, they may ask you this type of things. They may ask you to perform this one. What is the O data? O data is the service. O data is the service. O data. So, which means it will, it will pull the data from the, your backend system. If O data is the one kind of service here, technical service here. So this O data, it will bind it to, it will two way binding, two way binding. It kind of some pipe, two way binding here, two way binding to the source and the target targets or we here, two way binding. So each O data, there is a dedicated O data for, so each and every, so action, dedicated O data for each and every action here, right? So that is the one thing here. In the Fury apps, they, they will use the, they will be using the SAP UI5, UI5 related, all the SAP UI5 related development approach, they will use it here. HTML, UI5 related applications, they will use it here, right? So, and also, yeah, uh, if they are asking, maybe development side, they say development side, I don't have the much approach, then what is the Fury means? Fury is the role based role based design principle here role based you need to access the apps role based here role based principles we have to action we have to do the so things here right so here uh <clears throat> launch pad is the fiori launch pad fiori launch pad is the one of the ur one of the transaction code in the back end means it will open the url this url we have to provide to the user this is a fiori launch pad url then there is a one launchpad designer, FLPD underscore cast. Here, the actual developments, we have to do it in the FLPD underscore cast here. FLPD uh, underscore cast here. In the FLPC underscore cast, we have to do the here, right? So, gateway. Normally, if you read, we will call it as the gateway also here. Gateway concept also, we will ask the gateway here, right? So, here, they are the, the Fury as per the fury architecture there are the three types of layers are there in the three types of layers in the fury fury side we have the three types of layers one is the one is the presentation layer here the layer includes means our user interface presentation layer here presentation layer here here in the presentation layer we have the fury home page fury launch pad fury Launchpad. In the launchpad, it contains the list of applications and the applications, everything available. Next one is the logic layer. Fiori contains the three layers actually. One is the logic layer here. Logic layer. Logic means it's the Fiori front end server. Here, Fiori front end server. In this layer, so it will handle the user request logic which you open the application communication with the backend systems so that will do the logic layer here that we will call it as the logic layer within the fiori itself we will fiori component itself we have this one here right the second one third one is the actual layer that is the backend layer that is called the data layer here so this layer is the sap backend system here so in this layer we have the all the business data stored here so gateway always always come Oh, yeah, o data it will expose the data to the here it will pull the data from the here system the backend systems here it will double the data from the, the backend system here right so here the mainly the apps oriented the apps oriented we have the transactional apps 
and analytical apps here mainly useful here so transactional purpose here user to carry out the operations modifying approving so rejecting any operation that is called the transactional app as i mentioned ecc related analytical apps means data analysis reporting kpis so these all are comes under the so analytical apps here right so here we have the catalogs while doing the development activity so they are the so in the fury one launch pad configuration we have the apps fury one launch pad configuration we have the so catalogs are available so groups are available right catalogs groups add tiles tile is the app here right tile is the tile is represents to the application here to group here right so group means here before drilling the, the group catalog catalog is like a group of apping group of apps into the catalog so group of applications we will create as a catalog here fiori applications here so groups means here so group of catalogs we will create a one group here so group of so tiles means fiori applications here right group of fiori applications are called the group of fiori apps group of fiori apps called the catalogs right so group of group of catalogs are called the group group of catalogs so that is the the major major thing here and uh, i think they don't go more but uh, in the technical side if you are going for interview they don't ask these things but they may ask you what is catalogs groups layers what is the transaction code how to check the gateway which one you prefer it why because we have a lot of things in the interview to ask it right so not only just only concentrate on the fury just only fury is the one small portion they will ask you right that is the one thing here so apart from that apart from that so let's start some discussion about the the migrations and conversions here right migrations and some conversions here that will place this time so here <coughs> migrations so migrations means either os or db will change to the target or on prem to on prem or on prem to cloud so anything target should be anything so here we can use the the migrations related options we can use it here migrations and conversions related so which means here if you want if suppose here <coughs> here so suppose you want to do the osdb migration suppose like this is the normally for the migrations normally we will use the sum tool the tools wise we will use the sum tool here or some customers they will use the swpm exports and swpm import swpm so system copy methods they will use it here so either any method you can use it so that will not say so all our sap related tools only any method which is the best possible way you can use the uh, so you can use the the tools here right so here the main thing migration means so here the source and this is the target here right so target here it is the windows you want to go for the linux then definitely you need to build the linux system so then you need to move the so using the sum tool you need to using the sum tool you can move the data some tool what it will do if we are using the sum tool it will use the export then it will use the import to the here silent data migration suppose same database if you are using that's fine if you are not using the same database if you are using the so only os migration then export import method is the best solution here right some tool means some tool if it is the if you are going to the hana db or sybase so that time hana db suppose if you are going to the hana database so from sql or oracle to the hana database in this case some tool will do the migration silent data migrations then will move to the your target systems also it will move to the target system also here it will move to the target systems so it will only database will be switched to the target system here so but source database still stay here in any case if you think the it's a uh, if so, uh, there is a issues so you want to roll back just if you reset the option then again you can go back to the previous database itself only so there is a option to go back to the previous 
so in the recent version of the some tools we, we can do the migration without any sap update also we can perform it previously sap update is required now without any updating the sap system only database we can move from windows to so windows sql to the linux so hana database we can move it so here the mainly who will help means here either some tool or r3 rwpm here the r3 load and r3 load export process will be used here then r3 load then import process will be used here r3 load export process r3 load import process will be used here to perform this operations here right so what it will do it will export the data r3 load will export the data to the source system here will import the data to the here so while export import is running then let me show you we have done this type of scenarios here as a we have done this type of scenarios here let me show you the one document here which we created during the our previous run so previous uh, previously we have done the s corona conversion with the practical wise we have done it so here uh, i will show you the screens here the ecc to s corona see here <clears throat> this is the sum tool we have we used the sum tool approach here we used the sum tool approach here you can see it here so sum tool we started then here downtime optimized we selected sum tool we started this is the conversion this is the conversion we used it here this is the s4 conversion sum tool you used we provided the migration then downtime optimized option we selected it will minimize the downtime which means during the downtime optimized so there are the options here during the sum tool downtime optimized and downtime optimized so which means so if you select that option uptime activities are more downtime activities are very downtime activities are very less here so which means we are minimizing the all the activities here so we have prepared this documentation here we have created a one good document previously here as per the so previous execution means previously uh, I have taken the one S Corona conversion migration batch. So that time, so we have created this this one. We have created the so this one here. And also, you can see the database migration option also available here. So what does it mean by database migrations here? So which means here if you do it with the classical migration or DMO migration here. Classical means classical migration means first you need to update the sap systems then after that just migrate just to move the database to the other two step approach here as part of the dmo single step you can just you can you can you can update you can move the database options you can do that one here single step here no? so that is the classical and traditional approaches are there here as part of the dmo concept here database migration concept here right so database migration concepts are there here so apart from that, if you go with the TV migration to HANA, yeah, this is the document I am referring. Here you can see this is what we are discussing now, database migration option without system update. So each and every step-by-step -step documents we have created for previously here for the batch. So we, we used the some tool here. So then we, we proceeded here, there is an option configuration file there is a without configuration file option we need to choose it here no stack configuration file option why because here if you choose the configuration file we have to update the sap then we don't want to sap update here what we have done is here sap will stay here only only database we want to move to the from sql to windows to the linux hana db we have to move it so that is the the main aim of this this procedure here so without software update then dmo without system update we selected here then you can see so dmo without system update then downtime optimized scenario it asked the migration definitely you require the migration key as a preparation activities migration key are required here migration keys are required here so because we are changing the data here right migration key so then you can see it here the tables list of tables here what are the tables you want to do it during the uptime here the tables migration here so what are the tables we want to do the update here during the uptime activity so table selection we have done it here 
provide the passwords that extraction phase then so we proceed with the download directory so kernel files for the export purpose we have downloaded the kernel files here why because kernels are required here in the target system so you need to build the target system itself in the in the, in the advance so then after that here we are continuing with the so extraction configuration checks everything we have proceeded here so mainly here thing is required some tool and migration key as a prerequisites and some tool migration key and uh, <coughs> so kernels kernels are required here source and target so then we can choose the uh, we can unselect the yes gen so the speed ed spio see here the documentation we clear cut we have prepared the all the documentation here right so we have installed the hana client also we have to install it here so migration specific passwords silent data migration so step by step step by 90 pages document only database migration here then we have successfully moved to the successfully import, successfully migrated from sql server to hana db we did it here so it's a it's a we have done it you can see here the after that when we checked it here it's moved to the hana database here hana database we moved it here so this kind of so the live activities we have performed in the as part of this so migration activities here so the next document is the once done it then we perform the s4 on a conversion s4 on a conversion we started here s4 on a conversion we done it here so same using the sum tool only here we have done the s4 on a conversion here total 120 pages document here right the issues related things so missing the missing not implementations so the issues issues related here the patches missing ana ana related ana related client we have not installed it some of the add ons are missing here unable to find the delivery units so there are the multiple issues here right old update records and few excuse found in the ecx unable to start the shadow system again we started memory issues at ana database level duplicate key error we deleted the error and also system cannot find the file specific profile related error here and sdma errors and the jobs related jobs will take very longer time here so each many issues we faced it out and many issues we faced it out then finally so see here we upgraded to the so s4 on 2023 on premise we have upgraded to the s4 on 2023 we upgraded here right s4 on 2023 we upgraded each and every issues we also documented in the, our steps here each and everything so we documented here updated the down suppose if any issues occurs some failure the job is taking very longer time so then we have to use this note and we have to include resolution section we have updated what we have done it so each and everything we have updated in our so current documentation side and everything we have updated so means issues tomorrow <clears throat> if anybody wants to know what are the issues you faced during this time means you can see this type of issues we faced it out here okay so suppose if you tomorrow so someone ask you uh, can you tell me the issues which you faced as part of the migration and conversion which means then you can tell this type of issues here the missing note implementations right acp patches and everything so you can just tell this kind of uh, issues what we faced it here right general error right it's a migration so it's a like kind of tools we will we will using the tools here so some tools some dmo sometimes the customer will want to go for the cloud also here in the cloud so they want to go for the cloud on prem to cloud so then they want to change the ecc to s4 and some customers they don't want to change it they prefer only they prefer only to go to only they prefer to go to only so as is as is migration that is called the as is migration as is migration which means same source source same target source source data everything should be same just as is cloud they have to go with this one this is called the as is migration here so anything either the as is or the target anything is here we have to use the sum tool if it is the target is the cloud then cloud side we need to do the some custom some work here vm creations instances creations then firewall rules networking so all those things we have to derive the deployment the instances so target system preparations on our system we have to install it so all kind of things we need to do it here all kind of checks things we have to perform as part of the preparation activities here 
then mm -hmm. so there is a connectivity should be required from the on premise sim to the target here then yeah. just we can pass the information just we can go to the, the target side we can move it here so this kind of things we can perform it here okay so here major thing r3 load tools will be useful here r3 load binaries here it will do the export of the current dv and it will import to the target system while importing it will convert it here so this is called the silently it will data will be migrated sdmi concept there is a new concept SAP implemented SDMI. Maybe sometimes they may ask you, so what is the SDMI in the migrations or conversions topic, right? Silent data migration, which means during the uptime itself, so whatever the data you have, the data will be migrated to your target system. Silently, it will be migrated to the target system here. It, you, the, the advantage of using the some sum tool is reset option. Immediately you can go for the reset to the, the previous levels. You can reset it here. Anyway, you can do the reset option. We can do that one. So what I can do, I have, if you need the questions wise topics, I have some dumps. Dumps are there. So I will share the, the migration related dumps to the you guys. So you see, whatever we discuss is similar thing only. Now everything, each and every step, what approach you followed, what tools will be helpful. So what is the source system recommendations, target system recommendations. Source system minimum, it should be EHP 8 or EHP 7 or 6 also 5, but minimum SP level is required. So EHP 8, SPS 00, also some initial support pack level also fine here, right? Initial support pack level also fine for the so this one here. So uh, I will share that one term so that we can go through it here. Okay. So anything you want to discuss as part of uh, any questions, any topic you want to discuss? No, no, no. Uh, last this uh, this S4 conversion. Uh, I bought that course uh, uh, in November, but uh, you were showing that document, right? Uh, that screenshot. So I, okay. I don't know if I got that one. You Can I share that? my screen just to show you whatever I have? Okay, you taken the course. Hello. That time. Yes, yes. I'm recording recordings. Okay, recording. Okay, that is the previous batch, I think. Previous batch recordings, I think. It's a re yeah in London. In the month of February, this one happened in the month of the February. Ah, okay. So. Okay, this is different then. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. If you want.